everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I will be sharing my October TBR. A TBR stands for To Be Read. These are the books that I want to read in October. October is fall. It is all in on fall. I think November is also very fall, but I know towards the end of November you start feeling Christmassy. So October is the time to go in on all of the fall books. I'm here with all the fall books that I have are fall-ish books. So let's just get into it. So October is spooky season. We have Halloween in October. So I think it's the perfect time to read mysteries and thrillers. I've got some new mysteries and thrillers I'm excited about. This one I've actually had for a while, so this isn't a new one. This is The Maid. I have not heard many people talk about this. I don't even know exactly what this is about. Me with literally any book I buy. I don't know anything about it. I just see the cover. I'm like, oh, that's pretty. And then I just purchase it. Makes total sense. I got this at Target a really long time ago. The first line on the back is, a dead body is one mess she can't clean up on her own. Sounds like she's the maid and there's a murder. And she is the suspect of the murder. It seems quick to get into. It's less than 300 pages, so I think this will be a quick, easy read. It's a Good Morning America book club pick. I'm intrigued by it. We'll see. The next book I'm really excited for, this is Truly Devious. This is a dark academia book. I've only read one other dark academia book and that was The Maidens and I absolutely ate it up. So I'm excited for this one. This is at a famous private school in Vermont. A long time ago, there was a kidnapping and the only clue was this riddle that was really ominous and it was signed Truly Devious. Years later, a girl that goes to the private school wants to solve this cold case, but Truly Devious makes a return. Da, da, da. Next, this book, this book intimidates me so bad. This is Billy Summers by Stephen King. Haley Pham had a Stephen King journey and she read this one. I don't know, maybe this was her first one that she read and she absolutely fell in love with Stephen King's writing. Don't think I'm going crazy though. I will not do horror stuff. I'm afraid of the dark. I'm afraid of clowns. I'm afraid of masks. I'm afraid of closed spaces. I think that's what makes up Stephen King stuff and any horror stuff in general. So, um, that's a no-go zone. It reminds me of The Equalizer almost, like he's a hitman, but he will only go after the people that actually deserve it. I worded that so poorly. I said he'll only go after people that deserve it. First, as a Christian, we all deserve death. Like, we all deserve death on that cross. But we have a savior. That is another topic. I get into the Bible later in this video. <laughs> a second, uh, we should not be going around killing people. It came out really wrong. <laughs> However, I do condone you watching the Equalizer movies. Those are so good. But he wants to get out of his job and there's one last hit. It's very fallish when you look at it. We'll see if I can actually hype myself up to read it. It's a little over 500 pages, so it's really intimidating to me. The last mystery thriller I have is The House Across the Lake. I just recently got this at a used bookstore, so it was only like $4. This is one of Haley Pham's favorite thrillers. that She rated this five stars a while ago. It's been in the back of my brain that I wanted to read it. I read Lock Your Door by Riley Sager. It's kind of terrible. <laughs> a recently widowed lady lives at a lake house and she always just watches out the windows. I think there's an all glass house across the lake and she keeps watching the family and then one day the one of the family members just disappears and she wants to know what happens to her. I don't know, sounds like a lot of secrets and lies and juicy drama. Those are the main mysteries and thrillers that I really want to get to. Next, I want to get to some fantasies. This one I might have to really hype myself up to read. This is Ruin and Rising. This is the last book in the Shadow and Bone trilogy. I read the first one. I really enjoyed it. I read the second one. It was not my favorite. But I really want to read the last book in the trilogy to say I've actually finished the series. In the second book, she's preparing a lot for something big. So I know that something big is going to actually come in this book. It does take me a little bit to get through just because of the writing. It's not as fast paced as other fantasies I've read. But I do really want to finish this. I have too many series that I've started. But I want to start a new one. This is The Selection by Kira Cass. This is more of a dystopian novel. It seems like the typical dystopian novel where there's a girl and she has to compete for the prince's heart. But she actually doesn't want to marry the prince but she has a, another boy that she really likes who's not part of the royal family. There's a love triangle which love triangles aren't my favorite. I always end up rooting for the person that they don't end up with which doesn't make much sense. All right love triangles are not my favorite. I don't understand how so many hit movies and tv shows are love triangles. Hunger Games, The Summer I Turned Pretty, Twilight, To All the Boys I've Loved Before, The Kissing Booth. Why are we so obsessed with them? I guess it's just to add angst and tension. But then you have these two conflicting sides and they're gonna stand there. Oh, here's a big one. I Carly, are you a cruddy gal or a seti gal? I'm a seti gal, Sam and Freddy all the way. So I haven't even watched the new I Carly because Sam's not even in it. I don't know, man. This is on Kindle Unlimited, so if I ever want to read it on my Kindle, I can also switch over to the e-reader version rather than the paper copy. I have the first book and the second book in this series, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. This is part of the Hunger Games series. This is a prequel all about Snow's background and when he's younger. The movie's coming out really soon and I want to read this book before it comes out. I loved the Hunger Games books when I read it and, um, oh. 
the fonts I'm a lot smaller than I was expecting. This is kind of a chunky book. I'm so excited to read it. This is the Barnes Noble Special Edition, so it's purple. There's a purple cover, and it's paperback. I never said my goal in the beginning. I really want to read 10 books this month. Actually, I have 11 here, but I want to read 10 books this month. Let's move on to romance books. This one I picked up a while ago. This is Anna and the French Kiss. This is really not particularly a fall book. I don't really know why. I feel like I could read this in the fall time. She's living in Atlanta, which I'm from Georgia, so kind of near me, but she's sent off to boarding school in Paris. It sounds like a a romance starts to happen with a French boy. It's pretty much all I've got from it. It was buy two get third free at Books a Million, so that's why I picked it up. The font is a great size though, so maybe I can get through this pretty quickly. The next book is In the Weeds. I just recently got this. This author wrote Love Like Farms, which was a Christmas wintery book. I think she's writing a book for every season, and this is the fall book. It's about a girl and a guy who had a fling, but they really didn't know each other, and turns out she's a big social media influencer, and I think he's just a small town farmer. They meet again and have a second chance at romance and love and relationship. The next book I'm extremely intimidated by, Finding 13. It just looks like it would be good for the fall time and fall time I feel like oh my goodness, I cannot believe how small the font is until you open it up. I feel like I'm gonna have a little more time in the fall or at least I feel like I would have more time because it's a little slower and cozier so hopefully I can get through this book. It's gigantic though. It's 600 pages and the font is so small. I don't really think you can tell how big this book is until you put it up next to another book. It's hefty. It's really really big but maybe I'll get to it. Talked about getting to it in other videos and I just need to bite the bullet and do it. <laughs> and the last book on my TBR I'm most excited for. This is The Seven Year Slip. This book recently blew up. First off just look at this cover. This is so fall. This is a romance, but I think there's a little bit of a, I don't know if I'd say fantasy element to it, but a magical element to it. A girl shows up in her apartment and a guy standing there. I would be running for my life if there was a guy in my apartment. Turns out he's from seven years in the past. So she's living the present, he is living seven years in the past. They spark up a romance, but what do they do when they're living years apart and different lives completely? I'm interested by it. In my mind, seven years as an age gap romance is really not that big of a deal, but I don't really know like how it's gonna work out. I say that and my mom's probably watching this thinking girl if you showed up with a 27 year old blocked but I don't think it's supposed to be an age gap romance. I think it's supposed to be more like magical. He's living a completely different life than she is. Okay, these are all the books that I want to read this month. I'm really excited to read this month. I feel like I'm going to be able to get through more than I was in September because I don't have as much planned on the weekends. <laughs> we'll see if I can get through all of these. The hours for today is Psalm 27, 14. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Fall, in my mind, is a season of patience and a season of calm. It's a little slower than other seasons. At least in my lifestyle. If you have kids, maybe fall time is crazy because they're going all over the place, but at least my season of life right now, it is a slower season. And I am preparing to go to medical school next year, so there's a lot of preparation right now, and I feel like it's just a lot of waiting and patience. Patience is hard for me. Patience, I think, is hard for a lot of people. But this really just encourages me to wait for the Lord, not be stagnant or complacent, but keep working towards what I want to do. But also remember that there's a time and a place for patience. There's a time and a place for waiting. And wait for the Lord. Be strong while you're waiting and let your heart take courage. Very encouraging and something that I needed to hear today. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you're excited to read this month. If you have any books that you want me to read or books that you're excited to read this month, please comment them down below and I hope you'll have a wonderful, wonderful day and be a blessing to others today. Bye guys.